Hello and welcome. You are listening to episode 108 of the Nearly Men Video Games podcast, coming to you live on Twitch from Scotland on Thursday, 5th of May 2022. I am Colin NM, and joining me this evening is Paul Kaczynski. All right. And Blunderboy87. May the fifth be with you. We are the Nearly Men, and this episode of the podcast is brought to you by executive producer. Hamster Boy! We have nothing to do with the video games industry. We don't make them, we don't sell them. We're not even particularly good at them. We are the Nearly Men, and at some point, you have probably kicked our asses online. Absolutely Hello. raging. What are you raging about? <laughs> Blunder stole my gag. I was going to do that. <laughs> like when we came here, when we came here. <laughs> You, oh, you, I was going to say, you went first. I was like, I didn't steal your gag. I, I, you I wasn't going to interrupt the introduction of it. I thought when, when we go full cam, I'll be like, oh, we the fifth be with you. Oh, outraged. <laughs> well played. Well played, Blunder. Uh, fortune favours the bold. Aye, early yeah. bird catches the worm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul's origin story. Wait, there's Bill the origin Aye. story. And then he stole my joke. <laughs> yep, fast forward to. Region, man. Next year when... Paolo climbed a clock tower with a rifle, and it'll all be because of this. Right, on May the 5th. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's, uh, that's dark, that's grim. I mean, that was dark so quick. Yeah. So quick. <laughs> it's just the way I like it. How are you doing, gentlemen? Good, how are you? Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, for, for those of you who have been keeping up with the mundanity of Project Kitchen, I've been <laughs> painting my kitchen all bloody day, and have not long finished, and I'm feeling a wee bit frazzled. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, I'm like, I can't even believe I'm 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 here because it all felt um only a matter of hours ago when I was covered in paint and surrounded by plastic sheets everywhere. I was like, I'm I'm going to struggle to get to the podcast in time tonight. So I feel I'm a wee bit bad here. now. I feel a wee bit bad because while you were struggling you, with your paint cheeky. and you were covered in paint and mm -hmm. plastic mm -hmm. things and all that, I was watching Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were? Uh, I went uh, sorry, yeah. I went sorry. I went sorry. Is it good? Did you enjoy it? Do you know what? It's good. Go and see it before people tell you about it. I went to see it tomorrow night. Aye. I got my tickets. So if, I saw a not very kind review about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all right. It is a bit of a mess. Everybody's saying it's a bit of yeah. a mess. And it is a wee bit, but it kind of suits it. But there's certainly bits in it if you're bothered about uh, people like like things that are cool. Don't, don't let people tell you. Go and see it. You mean no. like sort of Easter eggs and cameos uh, and things? Aye, aye. The, I the can't usual... wait to see the Wonder movie. The Wonder movie, yeah. <laughs> That's what people have been calling it. The Wonder movie. Featuring Doctor Strange. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you know, she I... is very good in it, I have to say. Gosh, she is Wanda. very good. She was very good in WandaVision. She's very good in this. This is, of course, Elizabeth Olsen we're talking about here. Mm. Just you know um yes yeah, she is she's she is uh very good uh sherry bobbins is is absolutely uh wonders her favorite character in the mcu by an absolute mile well she grew up with the the olsen twins and all that didn't she she that's her uh no well yeah. she does know she knew elizabeth olsen i i i grew sort of the olsen's are the olsen twins are sort of similar ages to myself and oh, blunder but I think they're a wee bit older than us, but only just. Yeah. But Elizabeth, but Elizabeth Olsen's like their like their baby sister or something. Aye. I remember when she was born, they brought a dish wrap about her. They hated her. Oh, did they? Yeah, they released a song. It's like we hate our baby sister. We try and leave her in the mall. <laughs> like, have you been on YouTube? Put like Olsen twins dish wrap a uh, younger sister. No wonder she turned into Wonder Maximoff then. <laughs> it, was like, it was part of the running joke that they were just like, no to Elizabeth. That is, um, that's it's, uh, it's quite, quite adorable. Slash that's cool. Elizabeth Olsen's um, evil origin story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how, how have we been anyway? So uh, apart from going to the cinema, Paolo, uh, right. have, you, have you been well? Been all right. My house hasn't been, though. No. Everybody in oh. my house is ill. You're just constantly know. it's been chicken pox covid colds gastroenteritis uh sore throats uh and and all of the above and more so basically just stuff flying out everywhere house of doom yeah. which 
which did you annoy to cuss your house? I know, I know. I've, I've only had COVID. I've had nothing else. It's How those the rest new <laughs> house is actually built on an in ancient Indian burial ground? <laughs> Craig T. Nelson visits me regularly. Like, <laughs> like the, the minimum thing there was, I've only had COVID, that's it. <laughs> it's like, Which was really wild, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> They're getting chicken pox and all that. Hellish, uh, hellish. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I, I, everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Glad to hear it. What be yourself, Blunder? I mean, fine. I, I had a tooth pulled out last night and the dentist let me keep it. Because so <laughs> he's 12. Cause I, yeah, I've already like, seen it. Like, she she'd kind of goes my mouth up and I started biting the, the gauze and she was, I was like, can I see it? And she was like, oh yeah, sure. So she's like, let me see, see it and explain it to me because I told her you need to explain things to me or I won't like you. And um, <laughs> the little nurse was like, you can keep it if you like. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. And then she's like, if you're going to take it out, put it in bleach first. I was like, to display it? <laughs> um, but then I was in such a daze, I just walked out the dentist right paying the bill. So I had to walk back in and be like, sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I was like, I'm also the runner. I just totally forgot I had to give you money. So what's the what's the going rate? I, I don't know, Paolo, do you, do you know this? What's the going rate for the tooth fairy these days? You'd be surprised. A fiver, a tooth. Oh, a no, my wing isn't that old. Two quid, quid she got. She got oh, two, two quid. Two quid? Mm, it's not bad. Decent, it's still you know what I mean? I count how many teeth I have, working out whether <laughs> this is worth it. <laughs> a fiver? A fiver a tooth? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, I think it was the... Uh, who was telling me it was a fiver a tooth? Someone in work, maybe? They're like, oh, my husband gives him a fiver a tooth. It's like, does your child have any teeth left? Because I'd be like, oh, rating it in. I'd be like... <laughs> That person the makes money. Three Stooges effort with a door and a lead for string. <laughs> oh, that gets me the that. Oh, man. Oh. Do they not, like, try that? Is that not, like, do they not, like, get, like, an anvil and, like, throw it out the window and stuff? Not that with the string attached. Oh, yeah. They just man. cannot get the tooth to come out. That's horrendous, man. That gives me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> um, yeah, don't do that. No, don't, don't try that. Yeah, at don't, don't, no. Very good for a Three Stooges sketch, not so good for dental efficiency. Absolutely not. Absolutely no. not. Um, anyway, so it, it's lovely to to be here again. Episode 108. Oof. 108. We've got, well, we've got some stuff to talk about. It's been a bit of a slow news day, but we have got a few things to talk about. Um, and of course, to hear what all you wonderful folks out there have been playing as well. Uh, a whole bunch of you folks have been in touch. If you'd like to get in touch with us, here is how you do it. Reaching the Nearly Men is easier than ever. Search for the Nearly Men video games podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or your preferred podcast player. We stream on Twitch. Follow Colin at Colin underscore NM. Follow Paul at Paul Kaczynski, all one word. Follow Blunderboy at Blunderboy87. And let's get social on Facebook as The Nearly Men. Twitter and Instagram where we are at Nearly Men. Or go old school and email us on info at thenearlymen.com. Need all that again? Links are on our website, thenearlymen.com. So what are you waiting for? Yeah, so what are you waiting for? Um, as ever, as ever, if you would like to get some lovely, if you get yourself some lovely new togs, some new threads, uh, such as the t-shirt, what I am wearing, uh, you can you can get it at printbunker.co.uk um, and into the collections slash the nearly men, you can get our lovely t-shirts, such as this one, um, for $15.99. Um, or uh, a lovely hoodie for the absolute bargain price of twenty ninety nine. Please do mate. check it out at printbunker.co.uk. As uh, as a number of the lovely members of the community have done, we've seen we've seen some lovely pictures recently, Paolo, haven't we? Of various Indeed. members of the community. Indeed, looking so good. Exciting. Um, uh, I, I believe uh, Bry. We saw Bry with a lovely bright yellow hoodie. Mm. Uh, it looked really good. It looked really good. Ooh. The yellow hoodie. I was quite surprised. Very colourful um, sun, sun, summer. Like a bumblebee. Like a like a nearly nearly men bumblebee. I liked <laughs> it a lot. And uh, and of course, uh, executive producer Hamster Boy, rocking. I think it was the controller t shirt. Sent the me controller. Very thirsty pics. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody somebody spends a lot of time at the gym. 
Hamsterboy. These, these doctors aren't working hard enough. I know. I know. <laughs> Hamsterboy. Unbelievable. I, I, I wasn't aware that we that the t-shirts came quite so skin tight, but it, 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 it appears that maybe they do, or maybe just Hamster Boy just likes to order a size low, slice down, just just just, just in case. In. But rub you it know, in was the phrase you were looking for there. Of what? Rub it in was the phrase you were looking for. Rub there. it in. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever you did there, Hamster Boy, it's working. It's working for you. Absolutely. I think more, it's more power the to you. T-shirt and a can we just spit on. <laughs> how much are those at printbunker.co.uk uh yeah but if you if you would also like to send us thirsty pics please make them safe for work i hate that's a request eh that's a request i didn't think we'd get on before the podcast get, oh, uh, three, three married men before i get us all into trouble but if you would like to send us uh some lovely pictures of you and your nearly men merch please do i thought he was going to say it again there I thought you were going to try and fix it and make it work. I, I, fi I fixed it by um, changing tact somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> the really awkward thing is my wife's watching the podcast on delay up the stairs. Oh, so you're going to get that. There's then. every possibility I'm going to hear uh, footsteps coming through the stairs shortly and, <laughs> and I may be assaulted live on the podcast. Are we delayed? Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> say what? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, it, for whatever reason you may feel the need, uh, please go to <laughs> printbunker.co.uk collections slash the nearly men and you can get yourself some lovely nearly men merch. Beautiful. Now, we have, um, we've got something we're kind of we're wanting to discuss. Um, here on the podcast, we are constantly like trying to... Um, kind of self-evaluate the, the the content that we are making um and while we're we're, we're pleased with the the podcast i think the the you know paolo's given us a lovely new shiny look here on the podcast um we've definitely got into the swing of of the properly two two monthly episodes um and that's all going well but what we have been aware um is on the twitch channel is that the other streams we've been doing on the Nearly Men channel have maybe got a wee bit stale of late. Um, we've been sort of running out of ideas um, of what to do, and we're we're aware that that we're maybe not we've not been at our best as a result of that. Um, so we're 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 sort of tentatively looking at mixing things up a little bit on the channel, and one of the ways we plan to do that. Is um is with some special events, um. Oh. So <laughs> yes, e. thank you, Blunder. That was, that was, oh. that was some good, <laughs> good, good. <Aye>. Um, <laughs> so yes, what what ideally we'll do, and this won't necessarily be hard and fast, but we, we, we'll we'll definitely be sticking to our two podcast episodes, uh, a month on a thursday um and we will probably still do a, a sort of nearly men multiplayer night as you know where the the three of us get together and play a game of some form um but what we want to do on that other thursday um is is do something a bit more interesting where we can potentially get you guys from the community involved or, or do something a wee bit special um so we've we've got a few ideas and we're going to announce our first one as well um, so, uh, Paolo, you were you were one of the people who were, we I think you initiated this discussion, did you not? So, what what what's your sort of thoughts on things? I no, I just think uh, it's it's you know uh, things have changed since we started the channel. Um, when we started the channel, it was you know as the pandemic started, basically we came into this, and we came into it as a three, very distinctively as we are. Um, and, and rode that wave for quite a long time. And then it started to branch out into more, our solo channels started to become a bit busier, mm -hmm. um, you know, content wise. And, uh, you know, as you say, we kind of fell into a rhythm with the nearly men. Um, so definitely, I, I think, I think as you, as you said at the top of the section, Colin, I think looking at things and reevaluating things and reassessing things is always really good. And, uh, yeah, we want, we want to kind of water the plants as it were. Yeah. So yeah. 
Shall I say what, I, what I'm thinking? Well, um, I didn't know if that was I, a lead I, into I, that. Or... I, 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 well, I was going to hold, hold, hold your uh -huh. fire just a minute. I'm just going to wonder if Blunder wants to weigh in. If there's any other points Blunder would like to make before does we do matter, does he? some does, of our ideas. Does he matter? Because yeah. he, he's he's like he came first. I mean, it was me who brought it up because I regularly do SWOT analysis of all my SWOT so, so it was you that brought it up. Well, I mean, me. if we're going to be picky, I brought it up six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> but they did listen to you. you That's, true. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Um, right. No, I think, yeah, definitely. Just it, It'd be nice to kind of make things a wee bit more not interesting, because we're very interesting people, Um, but give people a kind of bang for their buck uh, when someone's and yeah, I'm, a bit of an event of things. We, we are we will, three extremely talented people with a lot to offer. Aren't we just? Well, you know, it, it's one of those things because we we've been very fortunate that the you know the the Nearly Men podcast has been going for a number of years now. I mean, what we're we talking about five, seven years, seven years, seven years. The podcast oh, wow. been going. Um. Blunder's been with us for quite a while now as well. How long have you been? I mean, you must have been oh, nearly four. Four. Aye. four, yeah, four yeah. years. Um, so yeah, um, so so we're we're very grateful for the community we've got. The community's grown exponentially and hugely over the last couple of years particularly during the kind of boom time of twitch on uh, during the pandemic during lockdown and things like that where it was super busy and, and the podcast channel was very busy and we were all you know able to put lots and lots of time into mm. it um and as paulo says our own channels and just life everything's returning to normal yeah. so um things have kind of quietened down a little bit here on the channel and we we want to give folk content that you rather than just oh, it's, you know this or that we want to give something a bit more interesting so yeah we're we're going to do some 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 fun stuff um and Gaffer we've talked in Gaffer the past about various Gaffer possibly Paolo. quite possibly no no Lynn's no, Murr's in there saying more costumes Lynn's Murr would love a gaffer dance Yes, <laughs> Lindsmar may be the only one that would love a gaffer dance, but indeed. Look at Blunder's face, that's outrageous, Blunder. And think about your poor areolas, it's just painful. <laughs> you you bet you're thinking about areolas. my areolas. <laughs> All the things I thought we might be discussing tonight. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got a couple of events um, we're going to announce one tonight. Um, we've got a couple other ones that will be watch this space. We won't have exact dates mm -hmm. for those yet, but but the the boys have each got one that we're going to announce to sort of hit your whistles, um, and then we'll um, and he's then we'll see from there. But what would also be interesting this is very is, sexual, isn't he? He's making this very <laughs> sexual. You're the one that started talking about gaffer You're dances talking about and then Blunder's talking about and... areolas. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Areolas aren't sexy, they're a functioning part of the body. Blunders, what, what do they right. do? What do areolas do? They Men's lactate. areolas don't do nothing. <laughs> exactly, they're waste of space, so you should put a candle up there. <sighs> anyway. Jesus. Anyway. Um, oh. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to wet your whistles with this, but if people out there have any ideas of events that they'd like the nearly men to put on, by all means, give us a shout on the Discord or via socials. As you know, you know where to find us by now. Um, so, right, Paolo. That's me. We don't have an exact date for this, but... January the 23rd. You... you no. <laughs> right, okay. You have a you have a, an event that you are going to be helming um, that we will... The Nearly Men... That will be a Nearly Men event here on the Nearly Men channel... It will be announced um, with a, with a decent amount of notice, and we will be looking for people to get involved in it. But would you like to tell people what what your event will be? Uh, gaffer dances. Um, <laughs> people can that, send the videos in. <laughs> Male and female. I'm not picky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I started the process a couple of months ago, and it's kind of, kind of stalled because there was a number of factors. Uh, bothering me about it um, but mm -hmm. it's always been there in the back burner I'm going to revive the FIFA day that we had a FIFA tournament 
Um, I'd hummed and hawed about doing it a different way and doing it over a, a number of weeks and all that different things. Um, but I think it's very strong as a big day, a big tournament mm-hmm. day with lots of nonsense. Yep. Maybe Tugger McDivitt could come back again. Maybe we could contract him and again. Tugger. I know he's very expensive. Very expensive. What about, what about Mad Dog? Do you want him as well? Oh, Mad Dog. <laughs> oh, Mad Dog. I, I, I can't share a studio with him again. <laughs> Mad Dog McShambles. You sure you don't want, you don't want him to... to... Hope that a meteor comes out of the sky and kills all the all the inhabitants of a stadium. No, no? I don't. I'll be away again. It's him away again. Uh, so I so we're going to do a FIFA tournament. Um, I soon basically, and uh, I'm 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 one for not repeating things. I hate repeating things. I hate th- doing things the same. So this one's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. Uh, more exciting, more fun, and you know, like like I always say on our channels, it's the game is totally secondary. It's all about the people. Um, so you know, we might be playing a FIFA tournament, but the the fact of the matter is, it's 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 going to be fun. It's going to be entertainment. Um, yeah. So FIFA, come on, and I've got I've got big news coming up about that. But stay tuned. Oh yeah. Okay. So perfect. Sounds great. I cannot wait for nearly when another uh, FIFA tournament. Um, I know a lot of the folk out there will be super excited about that. Um, could so we get, please do, you know. Could we get Tugger McDivitt in a, in a gaffer dance? Would that uh, work? <laughs> no, I can come. I can categorically tell you that's not He can keep the scarf on. But <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you, you've got to try, people. You've got to try. Unbelievable. <laughs> Blunder, save us from this madness. What have you got in store for people? So my whole shtick is horror because I love being scared. I mean, you might not know that, but I love horror. So I was thinking about doing a little um, version of... The way I think I'm going to do it is almost like an edition night or an interview process for the nearly, both, the nearly Ghostbusters. <gasps> oh. do, even though Phasmophobia... Oh, so yeah. I'll be, I'll, there'll be an application form, there'll be self tapes to send in, and then we'll review the applications in the night and we'll, we'll get them in to see how they do in a ghost hunt scenario. Oh, my. So, so, we're, so, so we are the nearly men ghostbusters and we're looking for the like Ray. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We're looking for the Ray. Winston, yeah. really. Oh, Winston. Because yeah, yeah. we are, we are Ray Gordon. We're, yeah. Pete, surely. I'm getting the names mixed up. Winston, mm. of course. He's Winston joins them a little later, doesn't he? I'm which, clearly Egon. I was about to ask. Who's. <laughs> oh, no. That means I'm Ray, doesn't it? Because he's, <laughs> mean... he's not going to put up with anybody but I mean, Bill Murray. Actually, actually. <laughs> Come on. I mean, honest, I'm Venkman. Let's be honest. If we're honest, Paul is Egon. I'm Ray. Oh. I'm, the, I'm the thick dork. Oh, I don't know about that. No, I'd argue that. I, I thought and that was quite a good I, cast in there. Egon. Also, I think that's by looks, but that uh, they are cult and all the kind of oopy goopy. Andy's a bit of a goofball. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Whereas you're good with tech and you're like the logistics. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll take either, get, to be honest. Do you get Janice's name? <laughs> Janice's name. <Janice's Janine. laughs> We got one! <laughs> who, who, that's fantastic. Who's Slimer? Careful. Careful. <laughs> your dog's out. Your dog's right <laughs> off. This is, this is, <laughs> this is about right. I was just Although I think your slimer would make less mess. What <laughs> <laughs> does dogs smash him through everything? Oh, I, swear, I could also be slimer as well the way I eat. <laughs> <laughs> I ate eight bags of crisps the other day. I couldn't stop. I was like, oh, eight oh. bags of crisps? My and days. didn't take a breath between them. I literally <laughs> opened an eight, opened an eight, and I was like, what is wrong with me? Is that if I got a tape one? <laughs> oh dear. I mean, possibly. Very oh, possibly. This is going to age badly if it is. I see, I see Sherry Bob and say, Me, I'm Slimer. You were all thinking it. <laughs> we were. We were. That, that, that pregnant pause mind. that happened. That pregnant pause when, when Blunder oh, asked. Clearly, Sherry oh. Bob and says Dana Barrett. Oh dear. Aye. 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 And there is no Dana only Zoo. And then she's a demon dog. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, she's a dog. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a quote. That's a quote. <laughs> Sherry Bobbins doesn't know Ghostbusters well that's enough to know whether that's a quote or not. That's She's going to kill you, Kaczynski. <laughs> going to kill you. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Blunder's gone. 
<laughs> um, so, <laughs> I'm moving swiftly on. So yes, Blunder, we're, that sounds great. A nearly main yeah. Ghostbusters event where we'll, we'll addition a fourth member of the team. Yeah, um, and we'll have lots of people and we can do lots of maps and stuff. And of course, <gasps> as we know, Blunder loves being scared. Mm-hmm. I don't mind being scared. Paolo, do you do you do you like do you like being scared? Um no. <laughs> no. No, you don't. You very much do not like being scared, do you? If Paolo I have to blood? do this event, I'm doing it in gaffers. That's it. Just sitting you there will, just in gaffers. You provided a jumpsuit and you will wear that jumpsuit. <laughs> I'm, gonna, will not I'm gonna cut holes out <laughs> so the gaffer can be seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You can have gaffer over the jumpsuit. That's it. That's right, what I'm you. Okay, that, that's that's. Are you actually enough. supplying us costumes and everything for this blunder? Ah, oh, okay. quite, that's quite and stuff. Quite exciting. Oh that's my! Quite exciting. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and punch my six-year-old self and take my proton pack. But unfortunately, I don't have a time machine. It can be built. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 So. Yeah. That's really exciting. We've got a we've got a FIFA tournament. We're going to have an Alien Ghostbusters spooktacular. Um, but this month coming three weeks tonight. Okay, mark it in your diary. Diary three weeks tonight, the twenty sixth of May. We have our first of the Alien events. I am taking the helm, and it is going to be well. What else was it be? It is. Nearly men, Sea of Thieves community takeover. We're going to get five brigantines on the seas. We're going to have a whole bunch of um, uh, events and fun to be had and uh, some pirate shenanigans on the Sea of Thieves. So if you'd like to get involved, uh, any listeners or any viewers out there, please do register your, um, your interest. You can, of course, find us in discord that's a good place to get in touch with us um if you go into discord and just search for communities find the nearly men um you'll be able to find us in there um or if you check out any of our channels twitch.tv paul kazinski twitch.tv slash blunderboy87 twitch.tv slash colin nm you can also find a link there and of course on twitch.tv slash the nearly men um the there can be a wee link there as well and um, discord's a great way to get in touch of course info at the nearly men you can email us um or you can find us on our socials as well um so please do let us know if you'd like to get involved as i said we will be looking for members of the community to 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 play to to be on ships and have some fun um so that will be the 26th of may um should be a lot of fun should be a lot of fun. Look Anything forward. else to say, gentlemen? Uh, clean your joy pads. <sighs> Shout out to joy pads. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, we, you know, it's been a bit of a slow news week. We did say this, but but there is, there has been a story. There has been a big, a reasonably big story. And this is, of course, NFT market collapses just as Square Enix sells Tomb Raider to bet big on blockchain. This article comes from Kotaku by John Walker and Luke Plunkett. Yesterday, we learned that Square Enix is intending to sell Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal to the monolithic The Embracer Group, along with IPs for games such as Deus Ex, uh, Tomb Raider, Thief, and Legacy of Kane. Why? Well, to quote Squeenix, the transaction enables the launch of a new business by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, and the cloud. Which is to say, it previously announced desire to milk the NFT blockchain market. While the purchase isn't final, this is just an agreement to acquire them uh, until everything is signed off later in the year, the announcement press release says that uh, if approved, it would be a um, 300 million US dollar deal for the 300 million, um, Embracer will get a hold of the studios Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal, uh, the last of which um, will presumably be in for a name change, um, numbering around 1.1, 1. 1, well, 1,100 um, employees worldwide. Um, and also the catalogue of IPs owned uh, and or being worked on by these studios includes Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, Thief, Legacy Kane, and continued sales and operations of the studio's more than 50 back catalogue games. 
Square Enix bought IDOS and Crystal Dynamics along with it in 2009, while initially overseeing a number of well-received reboots of series like Tomb Raider and Deus Ex, later games in those properties, along with the licensed efforts like The Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy, their ownership became something of a meme in recent years. As no matter how high their review scores ended up being or how many copies they would sell, Square Enix would always say that games had underperformed. There we go. That was mm. that was quite a, a full-on um, uh, article there. Thank you very much for picking that one, Blunder. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so I saw this. Um, I, th- I thought it was quite... Quite a strange one that that Square Enix had decided to sell, and and the idea of selling to get. I mean, I'm, you know, we run a video games podcast. I still don't really understand NFTs and the blockchain, really at all. I, I'm still a bit bewildered by it all. I've got a vague understanding of what it all is, but it, these are so divisive. We saw the whole thing with Troy Baker. We've seen various different things recently. It, it seems very weird, and the fact that the market's just, I mean, it genuinely has collapsed recently. There's been a thing um, uh, in the sporting world, uh, an NFT market called Sport, uh, Sport Mongo, um, which is a couple of Scottish premiership teams, both Hibs and Rangers, um, had partnerships with, and uh, just the other day, the, the website just vanished. The website vanished, and basically it's been kind of, it appears to have been a gigantic scam that's fleeced people, and not just from these two Scottish clubs, but clubs um, around the world, and actually clubs themselves have lost a lot of money on it as well. This feels like a very, very murky business, and it seems decidedly Square Enix that they weren't involved in it. <laughs> it's so annoying. Like, so when I was growing up as a, a, a younger teen, Square Soft is the one where like one of my favorite developers did Final Fantasy Seven, Final mm-hmm. Fantasy Eight, Final Fantasy Nine, did a bunch of other games. Final Fantasy Ten, Final Fantasy Ten was the last Final Fantasy that was a Square Soft only game, and then they merged with Enix. I don't remember what Enix had another bit of their name, but they merged with Enix, and things started to get a wee bit gank, and they started kind of losing the plot a bit. Um, they were making really weird choices. Um, and then they kind of got their reputation back and they bought Crystal Dynamics and stuff and everyone was like, ooh, and they did relatively well and then again they started going down putting out games and stuff which everyone was like, what are you doing? And it's really weird because their departments to deal with like their RPGs and they've got a whole part which does like retro style RPGs and the Switch and stuff. Mm-hmm. They are doing really, really, really well. But then when they've got their big Western games... And they're not doing as well as they think they should. They're like slating them, like their own stuff, and it's just weird. I think they've kind of, they, I think they don't want to focus on Western markets. Really, they're quite happy focusing on like their Japanese market mm-hmm. with their RPGs. But then it's the fact, like, and now we're into blockchains and NFTs. I'm like, ah, stinky, no, why? Like, I just don't get. It. They keep making these weird decisions every couple of years. I'm just, I, I, I'm fed up facepalming with Square Enix, like. Mm. It's a one step forward, eighteen steps back. Um, NFT stuff always seems to be the sort of decision that's made at boardroom level. I mm-hmm. don't think that, you know that it, it it seems to be made with making a quick, cheap, fast buck in mind. I don't think that, and it, it does it, it does seem that the vast majority of companies that seem to be getting involved in it don't really understand them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what, what, uh, what, what, what's your thoughts on this Pelo? Well, what I want to take great offence about this first and foremost is the term Squeenix, squeenix. have you not Have you not heard you that? that's the first I've heard Squeenix that's quite common that people refer yeah. to them as Squeenix usually shortening something shortens it Square Enix is the same as Squeenix. <laughs> no, Squeenix is definitely slightly quicker than Square Enix. I don't like it. Much. I don't like it, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've gone all Captain Holt. Is it Captain Holt that said that BRB and Be Right Back are the same amount of syllables? Mm-hmm. What's the point in... Yeah, 100%, I'm on board with Captain Holt and everything he says. What's the point? <laughs> you know, it's the exact same amount of sim- syllables. You've not, you've not, um, you've not shortened anything. Exactly. Um, but no, seriously. Generally, um, when when I hear Squeenix being referred to, it's it's in a slightly derogatory 
Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Term. Yeah. Uh, term you point. know, it's it's sort of um whenever whenever Square Enix do something that is decidedly Squeenix like yeah. selling a bunch of stuff to go on the blockchain, then then they get referred to as Squeenix. Fair yeah. play. I mean, and this when, kind when of feels merged, it felt everyone Squeenix. was like Enix are the bad side, like they like everyone like the oh. big fans of years ago, it was Enix's fault things started going wonky. So that's why they like Screen X. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I can't. Um, I can't speak about N- NFTs without sounding like a grumpy old man. Uh, <laughs> I've I've ranted a few times on my stream about them, and I I I, I cannot get it. No matter how many times people try to explain it to me, I cannot see it. I cannot see how it's any use and how it's not just a lot of rubbish. And how people can just take a screenshot of said- this whole thing. This Blink. whole thing. Because yeah, the, the the thing I used to always use as a kind of comparison was, um, e- even if I had the, even if I if you know if you've got an original thing if you've got a Van Gogh painting then you have the Van Gogh painting you can go oh, Van Gogh painted that he used his hand to make it blah blah whatever, mm-hmm. and it's hanging up in your wall. But even if I went into somebody's house who had a Van Gogh painting and I copied it as close as I could, it was going to be different. It's going to be mm-hmm. my version of it therefore still got value whereas taking a screenshot of something or downloading something that's exactly the same there's no value anywhere sorry <laughs> <laughs> honestly I'm, I'm a grumpy old man I am a grumpy old man about this and I will never ever get it mm. I see evil monkey takes screenshots of Colin's trophy case for PlayStation uh, that's worth that's worth a lot evil that's worth, that's worth, a, lot. A, that's that. worth a lot a lot of platinum in there um yeah, it's bizarre. It's a bit of a shame. I mean, it depends on who who you know what what happens. What the the embracer group do with these IPs? There's some really great IPs in there. That people have been desperate for a new Deus yeah. Ex game for a long time. Obviously, Tomb Raider. As much as I've not been mad keen on the most recent games, they're they're they're, they're pretty good I, I thought the first one was pretty good in particular um i loved the thief games the original first mm. two thief games were great the remaster i found very dull unfortunately i was really disappointed with that but that could be really interesting and of course legacy of kane that's one that folk love yeah and they've got other ones like fear effect people love fear effect and they've been dying for fear effect to get a proper either remake or sequel for years so hopefully yeah they're gonna do stuff with these IPs that are just sitting like, "Hi, ah, remember us." So and looks, you know, it looks quite... like it looks like exactly what you're saying, Blunder. Um, that they're selling all the Western mm-hmm. kind of studios and keeping mm-hmm. the 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 Eastern ones. Yeah, and that that's not necessarily a bad no, idea. No, no. Um, you know that also, that could work well. Mm-hmm. I, I was talking to Bearcat Boy about it, and I was like, "I'm just glad it's not Sony or Microsoft that's bought another bunch of studios." I'm like, mm-hmm. it feels at least it's kind of. A bit like you're not going to be like, oh, you have to go to that console for this time exclusive or full exclusive game again. So, I mean, I've never heard of the Embracer group though. No, I well, I, I, I see that bad. bad guy. I can see <laughs> the aforementioned Baker boy saying, I don't have a clue who Embracer group is, but I know the IPs are in better hands now. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen people online being like, well, I mean, this gives us more of a chance of getting a sequel to. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy because hopefully the, the, the people who bought it seen how well it did and the potential it has as a, like, a series because it was a, a great game. Um, I, I, and can, I think Square Enix were just like... <laughs> the oh, Avengers, yeah. however, was not. I can tell you that the Embracer group was formerly Nordic Games and then THQ Nordic. Oh, so it's oh, them that no. are basically <laughs> gathering everybody up buying studios left, right and centre. It's maybe not in such good hands after all. Well, I mean, I don't no. know. I don't know that they're certainly better than they used to be. Um, mm. Probably because of who they bought. But um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, the the they're, they're not a hundred percent records certainly. <laughs> but it's a fact they're keeping. It's not like they're selling IPs and that's it. They're they're taking the the developers and studios. Like it's not just like, yeah sell off bits they're like going like here's the people who do them good take them well we've got to think about that that's over over a thousand people that's people's yeah 
livelihoods. Mm-hmm. So we've got to hope that they're in better hands uh, yeah. rather than, you know, you know, these studios being closed, they've been bought over or potentially being bought over and hopefully they can continue to flourish because we, we know there's a very talented group of, uh, you know, those are very talented people there. Those those aren't good games, you know, whether they're a, a particular um, uh, thing or not. Those are generally well-made games um, mm. and, and good devs, so we can only hope. Yeah. That um that it that it proves to be successful and actually works out for everyone and God knows how much money Squid Inks might make on NFTs as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? Lots of Final Fantasy NFTs. Can you can you imagine Blunder? There'll be so many. There'll be so many. Um. Anyway. Um. Do you know that? Do you know? Despite it being a bit of a slow news day, that was quite a lot of morsels. That, that we managed to chow down there and I'm feeling quite full but I could probably do a couple of wee mm, I don't know, Paolo have you got any crumbs? Who are these crumbs? Do I? Uh, <laughs> listen, I've got one big crumb for you uh, oh. it's one I go on about a lot and this slipped under my radar I only found out about this about an hour before we went live but it was came out two days ago FIFA has slipped in a cross-play test. Ooh. Yes, indeed. Ooh. So people who've got PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and Stadia players... <laughs> <laughs> Steady, boys. ...can cross-play at the moment. Um, it is released. It's live. I checked it before we came on. It is there. Uh, you can cross-play with any platform there uh, for online seasons mode and online friendly so that's kind of like uh basically playing people in a ranked way or Mm -hmm. playing people in a friendly way um it's a test i don't know how long it'll last i don't know if it's there until the end um but it's a real big dip in the toe for them to say you know this this is a high possibility fifa 23 will be fully cross play that i think that's the idea that's the idea so Tracking back to what we're talking about with the FIFA tournament, if this mm-hmm. continues, then we could have a cross-play FIFA tournament, which means it will destroy all the problems that we had with people on different platforms, um, and it would just make it one big tournament, which would be great. It would but be awesome. As I say, I don't know how many, how many, or how long that's going to be live for. It as a test, they didn't tell you when it was coming. They just then just dropped it a day later. Uh, so they could just take it away at any moment, basically. It could be a wee, you know, a 30-day a test kind of thing to see how it goes, or it could be on for the rest. But well, we can, we can but hope. It's very exciting because it's EA, and EA are notoriously bad for it. So yep. the fact that Sony's on board, the fact that EA are on board, this can only be a good thing for crossplay. The other wee crumb mm-hmm. I'll give you is... Have you played Guardians of the Galaxy? I have not. Yeah. Did you close the fridge? Yeah, every time. Every time? Every Eight, time I saw it. 18.6 million times that fridge has been closed <laughs> in G- Gardens of the Galaxy. Uh, it's That's so your annoying. Crumbs. <laughs> I don't understand that reference. I've never Basically, seen. on the ship, on the is it the Milano? Is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a fridge and you can close the door, but it, it keeps opening. <laughs> yeah. 18.6 million times people have closed that. I love, I love that. That. That's, that is very cool. Um, I'll have to play it at some point. Blunder is so much of a big fan of that game. It is um, so good. I started it and I've played three chapters of it and it's really good. It's mm-hmm. For me, it's finding the time to sit down and play it properly because it is fun you to play. You can't jump in and out. It's Aye. very, like, this is a story you will play through, it's, which I like. It was very, uh-huh. go, go do it. And it's yeah, got yeah. good music on it, isn't it? Which makes it yeah. quite problematic to stream. Great music, but it's got a brown screen. I know it's got a streamer mode. It, does, it has it got might a streamer mode. mode, yeah. But it, it, it does have a streamer mode. I think it takes away a lot, taking away the music. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. But the script is very good. Very good script. Yeah, I'll maybe give it a go at some point. Um. Anyway, uh, we've got lots and lots of exciting stuff coming. Um, and obviously with that news um, uh, then we've got a little announcement as well 
um, I guess that will be coming up very soon. But I suppose we better get to the <sighs> subbies. Subbies. Oh, that was that was shorter than I was expecting. There we are. Um, so, Game Pass editions first for all you Game Pass subscribers uh, on Xbox consoles um, and platforms and pretty much everything now. Um, yeah, 3rd of May, which was a couple of days ago, so this is live right now, you can get Loot River, that's on console, PC and cloud. Today, you can get Citizen Sleeper, um, which is a sort of RPG dice-based game. Um, I, I see uh, Evil Monkey was asking us about that in some of the comments. We'll probably come to that later on. We can discuss it a little bit there. But I didn't realise this was out today, Paolo. Trek to Yomi is yes. out today. Yes, I'm this, resisting. Um, this looks really cool. This looks really, really cool. Um, a sort of... A, a kind of... I mean, it's it's a different sort of game, but I guess it's a sort of answer to um, Ghost of Tsushima, I guess, if you if you want to scratch that samurai uh, ronin-style itch on Xbox, then Trek to Yomi is there and free to play, um, available uh, today, the 5th of May. On the 10th of, day, uh, 10th of May, you've got Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair Anniversary Edition. That's on console, PC, and cloud. Are you laughing at the way I pronounced that? I thought <laughs> I thought I did okay. I think I did okay. It's a mouthful, to be fair. Um, are you? Are you didn't? This is harder than Dangan Rompa. All the really hard names. <laughs> are you didn't Chronicle Rising? That's uh, console, PC, and cloud. And this War of Mine Final Cut. That's also out. That's all on the tenth of May. Um, on the twelfth of May, you've got NHL. 22 uh, that's console pc and cloud 24th of may you've got floppy nights floppy nights that sounds quite interesting actually i, I don't know why but i'm i'm intrigued by what that game might be <laughs> <laughs> um, that's console on pc and uh, also hard space ship breaker is coming on pc um on the 24th of me on the 26th of me not that anyone will be playing it because i'll be playing sea of thieves with the nearly men but on 26th of me sniper elite 5 is coming to console and pc that's gonna be good to be fair sniper elite 5 will be really good and uh, on the 27th of may the day that obi-wan comes out apparently <gasps> um, you can also get pac-man museum plus on pc and console and um, so that is your subbies for uh, for Game Pass editions. Um, Games with Gold, um, from April the 16th to May the 15th, you've got Hue. Um, from May the 1st to May the 15th, you've got Hydro Thunder Hurricane. And from May the 1st to May the 31st, you've got Yoki's Island Express. May the 16th to the 31st, you've got Viva Pinata Party Animals. And May the 16th to June the 15th, you've got The Inner World. There we are. Can't believe we're already talking about June. That's quite frightening. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, let's take a little stroll over to the PlayStation side of town. <laughs> Paolo's very excited about this um, because this will also help with previous aforementioned crossplay and uh, nearly men uh, FIFA tournament. But FIFA 22 is the PS5 and PS4 game for the month of May for PS Plus. So you can get that. You can also get Tribes of Midgard, which actually looks really cool. Actually, I'm quite intrigued by that. Um, and of course, there's also Curse of the Dead Gods. That's the PS4 game. Uh, P uh, FIFA 22 and Tribes of Midgard are PS5 and PS4. Curse of the Dead Gods is PS4, although will also be playable on PS5. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a good one. I believe this is the last month before the the changes happen to PS Plus. Is that correct? More or less. I, I, th I think it's happening mid-June. Mid -June. Yeah. Yeah, June. Yeah. Just so time for me finishing work for the summer. I think it's the last time PlayStation it. Now has got new games. The last iteration ah, okay. of this version of PlayStation Now, I think. And then and then they're they're amalgamating. Mm. Um, could be really interesting. Um I don't. I assume you guys have all had the email from Sony about how you're going to yeah. be migrated over to one of. The, I can't remember which plat, which the, one we're getting. The, the middle one. one. No, the was base the, one. Is the base one? Yeah. Um, See, my PS the, Plus runs out this month, so I don't know what to do. I don't know where they buy a month of it because they're they're talking mm -hmm. about they're not stacking it now. 
or something. Well, I don't know, but but I believe that if you have an existing membership, they are allowing you to upgrade. Yeah, you can pay to upgrade, but what I don't know is how much it costs to upgrade Mm. with an existing one. Mine's is due not until the end of next year or the start of next year, so I've got a number of months, but I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know whether or not I'd... Depending on how how much it was to upgrade, I'd I'd maybe like to try it out, but... mm -hmm. I'm not a big one for playing lots of old games. Neither am uh, I. And I don't, well, and I don't well, really... Do you defend the blunder well, we know you do. Blunder, this is right up your alley. Well, so... I love PS1 and PS2 games. Um, But, you know, I would maybe dip my toe in and try it out for a wee bit, but uh, who knows? Who knows? But anyway, uh, that was your subbies. Um, subbies! So, uh, on to what we've been playing. Um, Last week... On the Nearly Men channel, we jumped into the Sea of Thieves, um, the three Nearly Men, and we were sailing with uh, Ride or Die, Laura Dora, and Random Bloke, and we did the Shrouded Deep, which is the uh, latest um, Sea of Thieves adventure. This is a timed event where we went hunting the Shrouded Ghost, um, and we we had a lot of fun. My goodness, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that ghost caused us a lot of problems. (laughs) Ah, I liked us, eh? Um, Blunder, what did you think of it? I thought it was really fun. Um, it was fun going and doing the like firing the cannons and, and fighting the four different megs. I never realized there was like different types of megs, so it was nice seeing the different types. Mm-hmm. I actually think it was worth, worth, worth well doing it with two ships because it could have taken for ages. Um, mm-hmm. And then that last fight where we like she was hungry for the nail men, she kept biting us. Um, it was, but it was good. It was, it was fun. It was quite snappy and speedy, but there was lots to it. Um, no, I enjoyed it. It was good fun. I did scream a lot. <laughs> you, you certainly did, Paolo. We got to see the shrouded ghost. Turns out, shrouded ghost does exist, man. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out she's not alive. Um, she, she was every bit as epic as I thought she would be. She absolutely battered our ship. <laughs> Aye. We, we, I think we were unfortunate that, that it paid no interest in the other ship. No. It pretty much glued Aye. to us. Yeah. Um, but no, it was good fun. It was great fun. I, I, I love playing with you know, a big crew and mm-hmm. having the two ships was great fun. Yep. That was great. I'm sure there be lots more of that on the Nearly Men Community Day on the 26th oh. of May. Oh, man. Um, we, can, we can have some more fun. Um... But yeah, no, as I said, time disclosure, this was uh, Paolo's first adventure you got a chance to do. Did you enjoy that? Did it live up to the hype, Paolo? I, I mean, we kind of fly through the kind of story part of it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't take the time, I think, that I should to 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 read the text and all that as, as closely as I wanted to, but um, there was a lot to be done in that, that wee session. So, But it was great. It was great. I, I love, you know... You know I love worlds that exist, you know, things mm-hmm. that Star Citizen and all that kind of stuff. And putting this kind of stuff into it is just it's enriching the world, which is uh, can only be a good thing, I think. And because these are timed events as well, you you really are writing your own um, characters' history yeah. almost. You're sort of because you because you will. You know, newer players that come to the Sea of Thieves in the next six, seven, eight months' time. You're like, oh, do you remember that time, or, or you know, there was this time before where where we had to get two crews together and we had to go and we went and hunted the mm. shrouded ghost because we needed to get this um this item from from its belly and all that, you know. Mm. Um, I, I I like the, the fact that these are timed events and they are they're an overarching narrative. I think that re- really are knocking out of the park at yeah, the moment. Yeah, it's good, Mel. It's, it's very good. I love the fact so, as well. I know it's coming more later, but the the stuff that's going to be tied to what the community do. So depending yeah. on what the community do affects the the future of the story. I, I love all that kind of stuff. I think that's brilliant. Well, I think that's going to be really cool. Um, and that's all sort of tied into what we're doing at the moment, as far as I'm aware. These well, these are all. This is all part of the narrative. But near the end of it, there is going to be decisions being made by the. By the actions of the community, which Love is it. which is very exciting. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so that was that was great. Um, I, I've not been playing an awful lot of stuff because I've been um, pretty busy. But what I have done is I've I've jumped back into 
one of my one of my favorite games of the last so many years and genuinely will i think when all is said and done be one of my favorite games of all time because it's it means an awful lot to me hmm. um but I've, I've jumped back into stranded deep and i still love that game i really do mm-hmm. um it's been a lot of fun I, I streamed it twice this week and uh yeah it's it's just a really great game i just i just love the I, I always play it on permadeath. I would I would sort of insist if people are looking for the pure sort of survival Ill feeling, then then I think permadeath's the way to go because you've really got to be careful. You've really got to think a number of steps ahead. You've got to be prepared. Um, but yeah, I just I just love it. It's just it's it's nice to be back. Um, uh, so I've been doing that and been having having a lot of fun with it. Um, Paolo, you I believe have been sampling the the new update of a, a game that's become very very um very popular with yourself and a number of members of the community what have you mm. been playing i've been playing star citizen yeah. uh, before i actually talk about this it's been i just want to say it's been really nice watching you play stranded deep again it's, it's, uh, it's like a wee comfortable oh. pair of shoes it's really nice <laughs> uh, uh, that takes you back when i see you playing it I, I so you scared the bejesus out of me. Oh, that was so funny, by the way. Oh, if you go onto Colin's channel on his clips, uh, I think it's called Get Fudged Kaczynski. It's... <laughs> I, did, I did not tell you to get fudged. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I enjoyed it far too much. Far too I was much. scared the absolute bejesus out of me. I was, in, I was looking for a snake. We all know I do not That's like snakes. That... Me and Indiana Jones <laughs> have that in common. How low made the did the, the t-rex roar in my ear holes and i like my soul my soul <laughs> left my body <laughs> <laughs> honestly see it was it was the concentration of looking for the so snake con- i, I thought, couldn't I find this, a this bloody snake <laughs> it was hissing and rattling at me and i could not find it and i was like it was that sort of way where i'm like if i inch a bit too far i'm going to get bitten here and if i get bit i'll be poisoned <laughs> and on permadeath when I'm not really <laughs> set up for it, I, you brutal. know, a poisonous snake bite can be a very serious problem in that game. Absolutely um, brutal. Yeah. Awful. Watch, watch the clip, it's very worth it. Anyway, Aye, uh, Star Citizen. Star Citizen. So 317, 3.17 dropped, um, which is the next big update and features things like it's got ship to ship refueling, uh, you can sell loot now. Um, something else big that I can't remember. There's a river now, so the first river of the universe is there um, as a kind of tester river, and if that goes well, they'll be able to put it all over the place. Um, it's just great. I mean, I, I bark on about the the promise of this game and the potential of this game, where it's going, and it's just it's getting better and better and better, as you can imagine. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, it's still buggy. You know, there's still issues with it and all that. It's, it's very openly an alpha game, um, but it's just there's, there's something... I, you know just what I said there about Sea of Thieves becoming a world it's, it's the world that it creates and the adventures you take as you say um, you know I've not been to the river yet but I'm looking forward to going and flying down the river and that's the first and you know I was there for the first river as you say that you know when newer players come you can say well you know I remember when they put the first river in and that was a big thing you know, there's rivers everywhere back in my day back in my day boy so I so no, it's great, and it's just I I, I love the the community aspect of it. That every stream I do, there's people that join in. Uh, usually Johnny Caput comes and saves me when I die. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, much what yeah, happens yeah. every time. Although he did come and save me, and then I shot him uh, by accident the other day because he didn't announce himself, and he jumped on my ship and tried to fly my ship away. Uh, so I ended up shooting him, and it was quite it was right. Him. But you know, quite exactly right, Johnny Caput. But it's just, Johnny it, is kaput. It's Bang. so good. It's so good, and it's such a a, a a rich world. And every every time I play it, I think I'm going. I surely I'm going to get bored of this now. Surely I'm going to have done everything. And I've not. I've by far not done everything. But it's it just keeps pulling me back. Even if I am just doing bounty hunter missions, I really enjoy getting in and just having your ship and doing your missions and visiting plants, and you can explore and all that as well. It's just it's. It's really it's just scratches all my itch, the games. It, Can you uh, ask what the hell is going on at this particular bit of gameplay we're looking at? Actually, <laughs> this is just off the six who uh, said, let's go and have a duel. So so we'd, we'd, we'd a dog fight, basically. Um, and Johnny Caputs there as well. Johnny Caputs the third one. Just off six is in the pure white, if you're watching. Um, 
and Johnny had landed his ship, but he landed it. His wing was hitting the top of just off the Six's ship, so <laughs> <laughs> probably not the safest thing to do. Uh, in Star Citizen, uh, ships can blow up with the slightest touch at the moment. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's great, and it's just the, the the things again. It's the tools, not rules thing as well. It's got a lot yeah. of aspect of that. Um, you know, just off the six and I, a lot of time have races and and vehicles and things. Uh, you could play hide and seek, <laughs> all these kind of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> the nonsense that goes on. Uh, and th- people like Johnny, uh, who has played it for a long, long time, is and has a lot of stuff in game and all that. It's just so rich with what goes on. But it's just lovely to have people like that there as well who join in with all the other stuff for the people right. for the first time and all that. It's just. But I mean, it's I know I go on about it a lot, but it's just it's such an an important game to me at the moment. I think it's just really, just really gets under my skin, and I kind of stop playing it. Excellent. Nah. Uh, Blunder, I I caught a tiny bit. I, I saw you streamed this the other day. I caught a tiny bit of the vod on this yeah. game, and I have to say, I am intrigued it's by so, this one. So good. So you know, I brought this the day I streamed it because I kind of logged in at Steam, and I was like. I want to play something new, do I want to play something library? And it came up just out on sale, three pounds. And I was like, oh, you can't, can't beat something for three pounds. So it's right. basically Sweeney Todd the game. You play, you control a couple who have ran away from their previous place of employment and they start up a tailor's and a pie shop. And the tailor makes his clothes, and then every so often you get a customer and he brutally murders them. And nice. chucks their body into the basement and takes their clothes and then makes them any new clothes to sell. And then his wife, who's got a really weird name, the camera now, she turns the people into different types of pies and sells them. So, I, I mean, it's literally just Sweeney Todd the game, but it's called Ravenous Devils. Nice. And it is, it is the weirdest game ever because it's, like, really chill. <laughs> like, it's really, it's, it's really nice, calm background music as you're, like, murdering folk. <laughs> um... And it's, the controls are really easy. You use your, your your mouse wheel to go between the three floors. Uh, there's four floors, but I don't have three unlocked. Um, and you just, it's point and click. You click what you want me to do. Um, and it's all about time management and resource management. Um, and you, you unlock upgrades. So you unlock um, different machines to turn the people into different types of meat. So I've got mm-hmm. a mince meat machine. Uh, and the animation's great. She, so she picks them up and she chucks them in the machine and the wee legs are dangling there and then she starts to mince the meat and the legs disappear and the mince meat comes <laughs> out the bottom. And then you've got the sausage machine and she like she, you know, she throws them in the sausage machine. It's so funny. It makes the most clunkiest noise ever. Then she gets a like, baseball bat with spikes in it and jams the body in and then spins it and you see the blades whizzing around and all these sausages start popping out. Um, and she's got to, she's got to make the pies and put them in the oven. So you can upgrade like your your prep stations, and you can upgrade the speed of the ovens and how many ovens you've got. Then you can add in a table so people will dine in, and then you've got to take orders. So then you've got to have your pie all stocked and be making live orders. And then I was like, "Well, this is getting too much. This is too stressful." But all while you're doing that, you've got to go up to heaven, murder people, so you've got meat, and then make clothes to sell. Because if he doesn't sell clothes, people get annoyed at him. Like. <laughs> it gets a bit manic. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. And on top of that, someone knows your story, so they start blackmailing you to do things for them. Oh. And they start sending letters. So I was reading the letters and I was doing the voice acting, and then there was lots of voices. I couldn't remember what voices what. Um and it's just really fun. Like it's like it's so weird because the the deaths are really brutal. Like it, I thought it was just gonna be like a dunk. No, no, he gets his wee knife, his scissors, it's his tailor scissors he uses, and you're like, oh! Every time he did it, I, I, I get that gasp and shot. <laughs> and I've still got a steak machine to unlock, so I don't know what she's going to do with them and turn them into steaks. <laughs> and then you can unlock um, a greenhouse as well for vegetables. I did manage to, just before I finished, get a little assistant, very much like the little boy in Sweeney Todd who comes and helps in the shop. Mm-hmm. And he's not allowed to go into the basement. She said, Understandably. Her- she sends the food up in a pulley mm-hmm. and he serves, so that should ease that a little bit. But it's really cute. The story's really interesting. The voice yeah, acting is cute. really <laughs> camp and hammy, but it really suits it. Mm. Um, and it's, it's like you're doing all this like, brutal stuff, but you're like, my pies, my pies, my customers. Oh, I've got to keep everyone happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, what's nice as well is you, you get unlimited time to prep in the morning before you open the shop, so you can have like everything stocked and things prepared to be made. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you open the shop, you've got to keep it all keep it all going. Um, 
but it's really fun. So it's like three ninety nine on Steam, PlayStation, Xbox. If you like management simulators and you like a little bit of kind of camp horror, it's definitely uh, I'm definitely quite for you. Tempted. So, three ninety nine. That's no so bad. much Bargain. fun, and it's you know it's beautifully animated. Like the the the, the locations and animations of the characters themselves are great, and the stories are done like hand drawn pictures. So it's kind mm-hmm. of like a comic booky feel to it, um, and the voice acting is really cheesy but good as well. So it's it's, it's a lot a lot of fun. I can see me playing this uh, quite a lot to try and get through it. Um, but nice. highly recommend it. Nice, uh, nice one. So that was Ravenous Devils. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm very tempted to to, to check that out. Um, the the listeners and members of the community have been in touch as well. Um, Tommy B's been in touch. Uh, he's been battling Kaczynski in the F1 tourney and then a bit of Crusader Kings 3 2. Some learning curve on that. Yes, I, I mm-hmm. believe that is definitely the case. Um, quite a tough game. Um, and you, you've been having fun with your, your Formula 1 tournament, Paolo? It's great. It's been really good fun. Yeah, we're in week three this week coming up. Um, it's good. We had a few wee teething problems the first week. Um, Mm -hmm. just with connection issues but uh, we've fixed that for the second week and we've got three races done the second week uh epic shinty is is disappearing in first place everyone Ah, so much so that he's popped into discord to tell people how to get good (laughs) 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 but very nicely explaining to people that breaking is a good idea (laughs) (laughs) there's a good Uh, battle going on for second place between tommy scruffy and random and then we start to move down to like myself and johnny uh, and Jamesy and Lindsay Moore and things like that. It's been, it's been great fun. Uh, it's hyped, hyped to the max. It's good fun. Bags of time, Paul. You can, you can, you oh, can I. get yourself back. Got in that. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Hamster Boy, Mr. Bechusa. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring. <sighs> Haven't we all? Haven't we all? Mm. I'm loving Elden Ring. Fired up the F1 game for the tourney, and it's not like riding. Uh, and it is not like riding a bike unless the bikes break a lot. <laughs> um, and started Ultimate Team on FIFA 22 now since it's free. Nice one. Happy days. Evil Monkey said, I didn't play Sea of Thieves for a week while I was in Vegas. Are there support groups for things like this? <laughs> um, yeah, I think just get straight back on to Sea of Thieves. Evil, you'll be fine. What is Citizen Sleeper? And should I play it? It's free on Game Pass. I checked this out. It's a it's an RPG game um, where you basically get like five... It's a sort of steampunk RPG uh, game set on a sort of space station where you get five rolls of a dice per day and you use those rolls of the dice to sort of uh, get you through the day. Um, it's it's sort of part survival sim, part part uh, RPG. Um, I'm not convinced whether you'd like it or not. Evil, I don't really know. I'm not sure it's my sort of game, but I do think that it might be Blunder's game. I had a wee um, look at it. Uh, the art style is very cool. Um, and uh, I I was thinking Blunder. Let's be honest, you're the most open minded game wise out of myself and Paolo, and I'm probably the mm. least. <laughs> uh, I kind of you know I, there's a certain genre, certain genres of game I really like, and most other stuff I'm a bit like mm, not sure about. Doesn't mean that I don't then sometimes try stuff out and really enjoy it, but generally I'm not really one for just trying any old game. Um, Paolo is a bit a bit better at that than i am hmm. and blunder just likes lots of different types of games generally yeah um so yeah i kind of looked at it and thought probably a blunder game um so so there you go maybe blunder will check it out and let you know evil who knows um evil also says my my son smashed the controller on his oculus quest 2 he got for Uh-oh. christmas Uh-oh. oh dear Uh-oh. Meta is out of extras and they're two hundred dollars each on Amazon for one controller. That's how much so the Eve, Oculus to Quest co- well, uh, the Quest costs, is it not? Well, well, that's what Evil's just said. <laughs> I bought a second Quest Two today, paired the controller. Now I can get a new controller when they're available and give that one to my daughter for her birthday. Fun times. There we oh. are, Evil Super Dad, Evil Monkey Super Dad. <laughs> You'll be very popular. Can you be my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Steady. E- evil's everyone's dad um, Bry228 has been in touch as well I've been playing quite a lot this time uh, playing out this game called uh, Star Citizen, not sure if anyone's heard of it mm-hmm. but it is quite good uh, also played 7 Days to Die The Ascent, Phasmo Super Metroid, Pebble Beach Golf 
and F1 2021. But mainly Star Citizen. And Paul, I think Paul would enjoy the game as it's like Elite Dangerous LOL. Ah, Brian, I see what you did there. He's a clever boy. Yeah, yeah. you you're a card. Speaking you're a of card. golf, by the way, uh, I'm currently leading the golf tournament this week with a, oh, yeah. a handsome score of 25 under. Which it's is... I mean, me and Scott and Fire. I'm at 25 under. Scott and Fire's at 23. The next person is at 13. So me and Scott and Fire are... are Ooh, I was about to say something very sweary there, but I can't think of a replacement. Well, don't say any, any sweary. With the bee's bell. knees. With the bee's knees of the golf I tournament. See. <laughs> were you going to say you were the Doug Stanglies? Is that what you no, were going to say? No, it was even more than that. Oh, right, I see. <laughs> anyway... That's what the listeners have been playing. If you would like to let us know what you've been playing, or if you'd like to register your interest in <gasps> any of the upcoming events we've got, don't forget to see a Thieves event, then um, here is how you get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Find us on Facebook as The Nearly Men, Twitter and Instagram, where we are at Nearly Men, or email info at thenearlymen.com. There we are. Right, we've got some new releases. Um... So here we go. Um, on the so yesterday, the 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 fourth of uh, the fourth of May, um, wild gun mach- uh, sort of wildcat machine gun, no, wildcat gun machine. Jesus, <laughs> wildcat gun machine uh, came out. That was PC, PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Um, from Daedalus and uh, Daedalic, Daedalic Entertainment. Um. On today, the fifth of the fifth, may the fifth be with you, as we were discussing earlier, much to Paolo's chagrin. Um, Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is out. Um, Also today, best month ever, allegedly. Best month ever, that's uh, out for PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox consoles and Switch. Um, Crowns and Pawns, Kings of Deceit comes to PC. That is tomorrow. That is the 6th of May. And then on the 10th of May, we've got this War of Mine Final Cut coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. And also Songs of Conquest that's coming to PC. Um, On the 11th of May, we've got Brigandine, The Legend of Renersia. That's coming to PC. And on the 12th of May, you've got Cantata coming to PC. Also on the 12th, we've got the... Oh, these two are all difficult today. The Cantennial <laughs> Case, a Shijima story. That's coming to PC, PS5, and 4, and to the Switch. That's from Squeenix. <laughs> um, on the 13th of May, I know Blunder's very excited about this, coming oh to my. PC, PS5, uh, PS4, Xbox consoles, and uh, the Switch. From Boss Team Games, we have Evil Dead the Game. This could be, I think this could be quite exciting, actually. I think we, we're we kind of tempted, you know. If, I think this has got a sort of Friday the 13th style, Dead by Daylight sort of um, asymmetric um, kind of feel to it uh, in the Evil Dead universe. It could be a lot of fun. Um, Blunder, are there boomsticks? There are there boomsticks. Boom? Good. There's groovies. There's everything. I expected multiple boomsticks. There's like good. five versions of Ash. Nice. Um, so, oh, that's the 13th of May. That's that's going to be quite a big one. On the 17th of May coming from Sega, we've got Two Point Campus. This is uh, PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S and Switch. Does anyone know, is that get anything to do with Two yeah, Point Hospital? It's yes. the same thing, but it's universities. I, I assumed it would be. I assumed it would be. Um, Deliver Us the Moon. Remember that, Paolo? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Deliver Us the Moon's coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X and S on the 19th from Wired Productions. It's because uh, there's a sequel lo- coming. Oh, there we go. Deliver I didn't know that. Deliver Us Mars. Oh, no. that was a guess. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, also on the 19th, we've got End Zone, A World Apart, Survivor Edition. That's coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. And of course, this is a, a, a slight, quite a big one. Um, 19th of May, we've got Vampire the Masquerade, Swan Song coming to PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, X, uh, and series X and S, <laughs> X, uh, Xbox X, One X. and Switch. Oh, bloody <laughs> Xbox! Call your console something else. You have lunatics. Um, yeah, there we go. X, X uh, and X. So, so that's all your uh, all your newest. But uh, Paolo, did we have uh, any any comments from the chat? We did indeed. Uh, Evil Monkey. Uh, when we're talking about the Tooth Fairy giving mm-hmm. out uh, 
five bucks and all that. He claims that the Tooth Fairy takes Dogecoin now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the Tooth Fairy, the Tooth Fairy actually owns the um, Embracer Group. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, when we were talking about the thirsty, thirsty hamster boy pictures that mm-hmm. we were getting sent, um, yep. and I believe we were expecting a delayed reaction of insult being shouted at you, Cherry Bobbin claimed that she was too busy scrolling through the Discord to see the hamster boy picture. Mm-hmm. That's a private picture, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and when we we're about to make an announcement uh, with regards to the events on the Newly Main channel, uh, Evil Monkey put together the joint, was joining the dots as you were speaking, said mixing, uh-huh. mixer, you're starting a mixer channel? <laughs> yes, that is exactly what we're doing. Stay tuned yeah. for for we the are. Nearly Men are going to go big on mixer. We are hot we're, we're, on we're the going tip. Mixer, Bebo, <laughs> MySpace, yes. yeah. the, the, all, all the cutting edge, M, the MSN messenger, we, we, we're going to be gonna everywhere. We're going to have a room in Havo Hotel. Yeah, yep. Yep. Although I've been hearing Dave. that Habbo Hotel was a dark, dark place. Oh. Dark yeah. place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't know about. Go back. Excuse I me, mean, what? is it like is it like 4chan bad? Uh, hey. uh I think more seedy. Yeah. More, more seedy than 4chan. I <laughs> uh, like yeah. not not as in uh like as in dangerous. Yeah, like it was for teenagers. Uh-huh. Oh, dear. And- so what I was hearing, this is new. So is new. You're going a bit like that amazing. that priest and the uh, uh, Father Ted. <laughs> 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 this is the biggest lingerie section in all of Ireland, or, or so I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. That's that was the only it. reference to Father Ted we will allow, though, because Stinky. Glenner's a horrible, horrible individual. Anyway, um... That's uh, that's uh, pretty much it. So um, pretty much it? streamy, streamy, streamy. Are we doing any streams coming up? Um, I I've got a little something planned tomorrow night. But Paolo, are you right. on tomorrow at all? Uh, no, I'm not on during the day. No, uh, nope. I, I might join you yeah. for Drunger if there's space, but I, I, I need to see if I get back can. in time. Um, so uh, and so yes, then the next one will be on my channel. That will be Colin NM uh, Twitch TV slash Colin NM tomorrow night at seven pm. That's uh, Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to play Dread Hunger. We're going to play Dread Hunger um, and have a lot of fun with members of the community, stabbing them all in the back. A couple of new faces, um, I believe. Sorry? A couple of new faces joining you as well. I believe there will be some new faces joining us, yes. Oh yes. Uh, so some new players uh, to be betrayed um, or to betray us. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so I hope folk can join us for that. That's 7 p.m. on my channel. Um, Nothing will ever beat Cinnamon shooting random in the back of the head. Nothing will ever beat that. Magnificent. <laughs> well, you say that, but you never know. I mean, I would, oh. wouldn't do past Cinnamon to do something equally as despicable. Oh, yeah. my. I wish I'd got that in video. I, that makes me sad at night. Just the absolute it. horror in your face when Aye. it happened. It was it was the fact Bry was near me and I was kind of screaming to Bry that relating what was going on. <laughs> it's got noise. Uh, it's went behind him. No, it's going. It's going to shoot. <laughs> such a good game. It's such a good game. So uh, yeah, hope you can all join me for that. Um, Paolo will be on the Sunday social on We're Sunday on this week. Yes, Sunday social. Wait, wait, where are you taking us to this Sunday, Captain? We are currently in the kind of island group in between Sweden and Finland on our way to Ooh. Finland. So I think we'll Flying make flying across the fjords. We, indeed, we might make it to Finland and start our descent south to go through Europe again. Are you pining for the PR fjords, or I have am, you just passed on? <laughs> I am pining for the fjords. Finland is the country where I quite want to be. <laughs> <laughs> lovely lovely um, and Blunder are you on on Sunday uh, it should be it should be on Sunday afternoon I'm going to start by playing a new game it's called Nightmare of Decay and it's like a 1990s at first person Resident Evil homage uh, which that sounds bloody getting, brilliant yeah getting very positive reviews lots of big Resident fans are like oh my god that's amazing so I'm going to oh play that see how you get on with that and maybe some Dead by Daylight uh, depending do, on how do you have a start time uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Perfect. So you can you can pretty much go straight from the Sunday social and just slide straight into the blunderverse. There you go. Um, at 2 p.m. Like that'll that. be that'll be just perfect. So that's your Sunday morning and afternoon setup. Um, gents, is there anything else to say? 
May the fifth be with you. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Don't forget, folks. Do not forget. Um, we have our brand new community event coming on the 26th of May. It's going to be a Sea of Thieves community takeover. Please do let us know if you want to get involved. Um, and we will have a lot of fun sailing the seas all together in our own server, having some fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, we will be back next week. Um, the podcast, the next episode of the podcast will be on the 19th of May. That will be episode 109 Oof. at 8 p.m. We'll be back on this channel Um on thursday the oh i'm trying to do my maths here what would it be for the 12th we'll be here on the 12th doing something fun and don't forget 26th for the community event um but with that shall we shall we say a quick goodbye a quick goodbye shout out to joypads if you want to buy pictures of hamster boy please get in touch indeed <laughs> saleable for um very hamster boy expensive. nfts Yep. Yep, yeah, yeah, I'm smoking NFTs, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, okay, let's get Hamster Boy on the blockchain. Thank you so much for listening, folks. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>